The topic of today's video is a very important one. It is discussing the ways in which the devil may have infiltrated the church. Something which has been very deep and heavy on my heart recently. And something which I think is very important that we wrestle with. I know what I'm going to be saying in this video could be very controversial. And as such, I would like to recommend you to, if you do agree or disagree, and perhaps even more if you disagree, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I would like to hear what you think about this, because what I am going to be condemning, what I am going to be talking about are things which a lot of people may consider as really good signs. However, I am really going to be talking about three things in this video, ways in which I think the devil has infiltrated the church. When I say the devil has infiltrated, I'm not saying that every time you see these signs, it necessarily is evil. That's not why I'm arguing. What I am arguing is that the devil has used our desire for these things to twist it into a satanic, twist it into a dangerous, twist it into a negative, a harmful way for the church. The first thing which I'm going to talk about is speaking in tongues. Now you might say, what's bad about speaking in tongues? The charismatic churches love it a lot. It's scriptural in so much as we see the apostles, they were speaking in tongues. But what I mean when I say the devil infiltrates the church via speaking in tongues is that it is very different between someone speaking in tongues to an audience who understands them and someone speaking absolute utter gibberish, which no one understands in the church. And what I mean by this is that if we're thinking back into the times where people are speaking in tongues in the Bible, every time someone speaks in tongues, the reason for why the Holy Spirit comes upon someone and allows them to speak in tongues is that they can reach a group of people that did not understand their language. You see the disciples, apostles going out to the different people, the Jews and, and the people who were coming in, traveling from all around the world. They, they spoke to them in their own native language. That is speaking in tongues. Now, you could look, go to a church, a very modern church, and you ask the people there, they start speaking in tongues, or you witness someone speaking in tongues. Ask yourself, do, does anyone in that church understand what's being said? If so, what are they speaking? Ask the person who is speaking in tongues, what do they mean by what they're saying? Challenge it. I don't mean challenge it in a bad way, challenge it in a positive way. Because if they were speaking in tongues, the Holy Spirit was working through them, then surely they were speaking in a way such that the Holy Spirit is glorified through them, glorified in their life. But is that really the case if no one can understand it, if they don't even understand it, if they're being possessed by a certain spiritual force to say something that no one around them and themselves can understand? Is that the Holy Spirit speaking through you? Or is that the devil infiltrating the church? I think that's one of the first things that we should keep in mind. The second thing I'm going to be talking about is dancing brackets, uncontrollable spasms. There's nothing wrong about dancing, but sometimes you see videos arising from churches of people moving uncontrollably shaking in the church. Some people say, well, less, yes, 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 let the Holy Spirit come on to you. But there's of course a challenge. What is the Holy Spirit bringing one to do? It goes back to the point I was making in the first one about speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit, God, Jesus Christ brings peace. He brings love, he brings kindness. He does not bring uncontrollable movements for no reason. These are strange contortions of the body. These contortionist movements, these spasms, these things which induce not peace but distraught that bring in angst, struggle, I do not believe should be seen as gifts from the Holy Spirit. You should judge a tree by its fruits. You should judge people by the deeds and accomplishments that they carry out. You should judge a sign from God in perspective to how well that sign fits in with the vision of the Holy Spirit. In the same way that speaking in tongues or speaking absolute gibberish at times if no one understands you, does not seem to be in alignment, in accordance with what the Holy Spirit would want to achieve or what the Holy Spirit is trying to achieve when people are truly speaking in tongues like in the Acts of the Apostles. Uncontrollable spasms and dancing is to me what I so believe to be a situation of, of devilry, of, of demon possession, which is 
perhaps the more apropos view of looking at such a situation. Of course, when I'm saying the devil infiltrates the church through uncontrollable spasms, this is to be done or discerned after the experience and when you're talking to the person to see what they've learnt. Of course, if they've learnt something miraculous, if they've learnt something divine, a divine revelation, then perhaps that truly is the Holy Spirit. But if they've learnt nothing and were felt distraught, left, felt feeling negative by the situation, perhaps that is not the Holy Spirit and perhaps we shouldn't be longing for these situations. Final thing, a way in which the devil has Infiltrate the church is something which I would say ties in the two things I've talked about previously. That's the idea that we live in a generation which seeks signs. We seek miracles. We seek consolation. We seek the derivatives of what we believe to be God's presence and we do not seek God himself. We ask God for a miracle. We do not ask God for a relationship with him. We seek the speaking in tongues. We speak the Holy Spirit's action. We seek the miracles. We seek the dancing, the, the spirit coming upon oneself. There's nothing wrong intrinsically about e each and one of these things. But if you become desiring these miracles so strongly, if you become desiring these signs, these signs of wonder, these, the, these miracles, you're giving the opportunity for the devil to take those signs as a way to show his own power and authority. I'd like to bring your attention to the Grand Inquisitor, a wonderful passage, a poema, by Dostoevsky and the brothers Karamazov. In this passage, he criticizes the Catholic Church, saying that the Catholic Church is instilling authority via mystery, miracle, and authority. They establish the signs, they give people the signs that they're looking for in exchange for blind obedience. I'm not saying that that's what the Catholic Church actually is. I'm not delving into that in this video. What I am, however, talking about is the worrying nature that we do seek those signs above everything else. We make the signs of God God, when in fact we should be worshipping God for who he is, not for what he can do for us. So when you're thinking about speaking in tongues, when you're looking at people who are claimed to be see witnessing people speaking in tongues, when you see someone claiming to be possessed by the Holy Spirit and are, are dancing, when you see people attempting to call upon wondrous miracles, Think about it. Is that being done for the goodness, the love of God, or is that done for the signs that this unfaithful generation seeks? I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know it's quite a difficult video to go through, difficult ideas. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you, if you want more of these reflections, then like and subscribe. And stay safe, my friends. See you soon. Thank you for watching and goodbye. I'll see you next one.